Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Land of Valley. Today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. Epiphany is this word for a revealing. That's what we celebrated last Sunday with the visit of the Magi. It revealed to us that Jesus is not just the Savior of his people, of the Jews, but the Savior of all nations as the... Uh, the kings and the queen of Sheba, all these people, and even Paul made his ministry telling that Jesus is for everyone. He's the savior of all people. So we continue on in this church season called Epiphany today with the first Sunday after Epiphany where we always celebrate the baptism of our Lord. And there you hear God's booming voice when Jesus is baptized that this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Shows that absolute certainty that Jesus is one approved of by God and by what he has done, that is what saves us. That's what makes us pure through our baptism. So we have a little bit different order of service for you today. It starts on page 3 in the worship folder. And just to give you a little cue as to how this is going to work, it's something a little different, is uh, Gail will be playing on the piano and there will be music playing through most of the parts of this opening uh, service. And uh, so even through the speaking part, she's going to be playing... Then when we get to the verses of the hymn that are printed there, uh, just note that you go that first line into the, the part way into the second line, then you come back to do the line underneath it before finishing off with that final phrase. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'll sing as loud as I can, and you guys can just follow along. Um, we'll go with that. Uh, and we will have dropped the music out for the confession of sins at the middle of page four. But then other than that, it's our um, fairly typical service. So let's begin our worship. Please stand.
itself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gospel for the first Sunday after. 
the Epiphany of our Lord comes from Luke chapter 3, reading verses 13 to 7, 15 to 17, and verses 21 to 22. <laughs> People were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. <coughs> We confess our faith using Luther's explanation of holy baptism as you find it on page 9 in the worship folder. First, what is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is water used by God's command and connected with God's word as Christ says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What does baptism do for us? Baptism works forgiveness of sins, delivers from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. How can water do such great things? It is certainly not the water that does such things. But God's word which is in and with the water, and faith which trusts his word used with the water, as God says through St. Paul, God saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. What does baptizing with water mean? Baptism means that the old Adam in us should be drowned by daily contrition and repentance, and that all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. It also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As God says through St. Paul, we were buried with Christ through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children to come up for a children's message. show us if we've done anything that were bad. But God talks about giving us a new heart. See, God is the one, that's what we heard about in, in that first Bible reading today from 1 Samuel, was that God looks at our heart. And he sees everything, not just to look at it to see, you know, does your heart work? Is there anything wrong with it? Does it have a disease? Does it need to be fixed? But he sees if the heart has any sin, any bad, anything bad on it. But, you know, when we stop and think, we like to think of ourselves as good people. We do good things, but we also know we sometimes do bad things. We do wrong things. And every time we do that, that makes our heart dirty. 
It makes it unclean. God sees that. No one else may be able to see that, but he sees that. He sees what we think. He knows everything we've ever said, everything we've ever done. Yeah. So the good news is today, what he did in baptism is he took simple water, water like you use every day to drink, to brush your teeth, wash your hands, all of that. He used simple water and put it with his word and said, I make you clean. And he says, I clean your heart. So when God looks at us and he sees us, he sees a clean heart. That everything we've ever done wrong is washed away and we are clean. So when God sees us, he sees a good heart. Not because we are good, but because God has made us good. God has cleansed our hearts. That's what we're going to talk about today more, especially in the sermon. So let's pray about that. Let's thank God about that. Dear God, thank you for taking my heart as dirty as it was and making it clean in the waters of baptism. Whenever I sin again, whenever I do anything wrong, remind me that you have washed me clean, that you still have made me clean. And so I stand before you as one clean. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head back to your Thanks for coming up this morning. We're going to continue by singing our next hymn. It's printed right there in the worship folder on pages 10 and 11, All Christians Who Have Been Baptized.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word that we're going to focus on this morning was the first Bible reading we heard from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. But as we get meditation on that Word, let us pray. Lord, as we come before you today, we know the thoughts of our hearts, we know all the impurities, all the imperfections, all the sin. Wash us clean once again and make us new as only you can. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, you know, Saul, the very first king of Israel, he certainly looked the part. This was the description given of Saul the first time we meet him. Just a few chapters earlier in 1 Samuel chapter 9, Kish had a son named Saul, as handsome a young man as could be found anywhere in Israel, and he was a head taller than anyone else. He looked like leadership material. He's what the world wanted to see when they thought of a king, someone who could rule, someone imposing, but also someone good looking and handsome. He started out good. He obeyed the Lord. Then he didn't. He rejected the Lord. And the Lord saw in Saul's heart that Saul had rejected him, so the Lord rejected Saul as king over Israel. It's not too long after that that the Lord comes to Samuel the prophet and commissions him. How long will you mourn for Saul, the Lord asked Samuel, once since I have rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. So in a depression, in a funk, Samuel thought this man Saul was going to be this great king over Israel, had prayed for his success, but yet he had rejected the Lord. So he was understandably depressed. But God said, go, I have another job for you. I have someone else that I have chosen. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. He takes up his horn with oil. He goes there. He meets with the people. And he decides to go, sacrifice in hand. This is how it goes. So Saul doesn't know what's going on. And he meets up with Jesse. He says, Jesse, gather your sons together. We're going to sacrifice. You're going to be a part of it. Consecrate yourselves. Make yourselves holy with me. We're going to worship the Lord. And they do. And then Jesse has all of his sons, supposedly all of his sons, there for Samuel. The very first one comes before him, the oldest one, Eliab. And maybe there was something in Eliab that reminded Samuel of Saul. Maybe Eliab was taller than the rest. Maybe he was very handsome. Maybe he was that, that very heroic demeanor. And he thought to himself, surely the Lord's anointed stands before the Lord. And the Lord corrected Samuel, told him, I'm looking at different criteria than what you are looking at. Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. There was something in Eliab's heart but the Lord saw and said, you're not the next king of Israel. I have someone else in mind. The Lord looks at the heart. And if we could do the same, that'd be great. We could see right through everything else. But we know as humans, we cannot look at the heart. We can only look at the outward things, the outward appearance. We can only judge based on those things. So yeah, when it comes down to it, we are judging people based on appearance based on clothing, based on how they present themselves, and not just the physical qualities, but the things we see them do. We judge them based on eye contact, a handshake, how well they treat other people, what they do for other people, what they say about other people, how well they are put together. That's what we judge on because we can't look at the heart as much as we may want to. We know this. We know this, and that's why we strive to look the best we can in the way that we want to. 
That's why we put on appearances for people because we know that's only what they can see. That's what they have to judge us based on. So if I can appear to people as someone who is well put together, as someone who is good looking, as someone who is, is handsome or beautiful, as someone who is kind and considerate and outgoing, who is witty, who is, who is funny, well, that's what people will know me as. If they can see me do good things, well, they will know me as a good person because that's all they see and they can't look at my heart. And so we use appearances to paint the picture of ourselves that we want. At least the picture that we want other people to see. We show them, I am good. I am kind. I am considerate. I go out of my way for other people. I'm a good person because of what you see. And even sometimes, when we put on these appearances, we don't even do them just in the standpoint of looking good, but maybe sometimes because we don't want them to see what else is going on. We don't want to talk about how I hurt and how I ache and the things going wrong with me, and I prefer not to talk about it because honestly, you're not going to present a different solution to me than the ones I already know about. So what's the point in talking about it? I don't want a pity party. I just want to keep on going, pretending like nothing is going wrong, that I'm okay. But all those appearances that we put on, our Lord sees through them all. He sees through the makeup. He sees through the acts done more out of self-interest than actually the interest of others. He sees through those moments when you can be witty and funny and charming to the moments when you're most well, certainly not. He can see exactly what you're thinking about people. Even though you're able to put a smile on your face and grin at them, can see the hate in your heart. Can see the struggles that you do not voice. He sees every dark thing you've ever done, even if you thought no one else ever saw that, no one else ever heard that, because it was just in him. God sees the heart, which means there's nothing he doesn't know about you, the good and the bad. He requires a pure heart. And when he looks at us, what does he see? When he looks at you, what does he see? You start thinking about everything you've ever done wrong. Everything that didn't quite measure up. As much as I wish God would just say, you know, you did good enough for me. Because I know you had those moments, those moments where you did something good, but it wasn't enough. And I would just pray, God, just remember the good things about me. Don't look at all the rest of that. But God says, I see it all. I don't really look at the physical appearance. I look at the heart. And when we realize what that means, that I can't hide anything from God, that everything is out there on the table exposed for Him, well, dear God, I need a new heart. I need something different than this, this dirty, sin-stained, filled heart that I have. I need you to change me. I need you to make me something different. As David himself would say later on in his life, in Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart, O God. Make me something new. Make me something different. Well, that's exactly why Jesus came. You know, Jesus, Jesus wasn't a whole lot to look at. When Jesus came, he just looked like another average Joe. Some guy, a carpenter's son, who's like all the rest. You know, when it says here in Luke, it talks about people coming to be baptized. It just says Jesus was baptized too. Just very simply, plainly, matter of fact, when everything else was going on, everybody else was doing this thing, well, so was Jesus. Just like everybody else, looked like everybody else. But yet John, the one who was baptizing people, he said, no, this, this Messiah, this Christ who is coming, I'm not him, I'm certainly not him, I know my heart. And I know I am not pure the way the Messiah has to be pure. 
But he is coming, and I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. And then the Lord showed the world exactly who the Messiah was. That when Jesus was baptized, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The Father's full approval pronounced on his Son in front of everybody there that day. That this boy, the one we just heard about not too long ago, hearing about him being presented in the temple, to, to, and then hearing Simeon talk about here is the salvation of the world, to have the wise men come and offer him gifts. We heard that he had completed all of God's law, and that continued to that point where you hear Jesus being confirmed in that by the Father. This is the Son whom I love. With Him I am well pleased. He has a pure heart. He has kept all of my laws, all of my commandments perfectly. He is doing exactly what He set out to do. Because Jesus did this. Because Jesus was there as one in his baptism approved by the Father. We know that he's done this for us. He did this so that we would be saved. That's what Paul talks about in that second lesson from Titus. When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, when Jesus appeared, when it was made known that Jesus appeared in that baptism by John in the Jordan River, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. It wasn't about the outward appearance as much as we want to make our lives about that, as much as we want to make it about what we do, how we look in front of other people. That's not what saves us. No, what saves us is God making us new, washing us clean. And that's what he does in baptism. Here it is simple water combined with the word of God to give us these great promises. That God takes that heart so full of sin, so full of imperfection, all dirty by the things that we have done wrong, and he scrubs that thing clean. He makes us clean new, makes us clean because he was clean and pure for us. He lived that righteousness in our place and then through baptism he clothes us with his perfection, with his righteousness. So when God looks at us, he sees us just as he saw Jesus on that day. This, very much say the same thing about us, he said about Jesus, this is my child. This is my child whom I love. With him, with her, I am well pleased. Because of our baptisms, we stand approved of before God Almighty because Jesus has lived out that perfection. He had the pure and clean heart that we don't have. By that, we have been washed. We have been made something new. And the Lord sees that. He sees that heart that he has made new. David has a good description about him. He said he was healthy looking, handsome even. But when you look at the details in this story where Samuel anoints him, it doesn't seem like his appearance mattered much. You know, when Jesse gathers his sons to come have a sacrifice with the prophet Samuel, you know who he doesn't bring? David. And when the seven sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel says, and each one the Lord has not chosen this one, do you have any more sons? And Jesse answers, the youngest. Doesn't even call him by name. Just the youngest. The one I left out in the fields. The one that I thought it was more important that he work than come and worship. And it was even Eliab, that oldest son of Jesse, who said of David just a little bit later on, I know how conceited you are, David, and how wicked your heart is. It doesn't 
seem like Jesse's family thought much of the youngest son, David. But the Lord does not look at the outward appearance. The Lord looks at the heart. The Lord saw David's heart. Saw a heart that had been made pure and clean, not because of what David had done, but because of what God had done for him. The promise of what God would do by sending his one and only son into this world to live for him just as he did for us. So God had given David this new heart and so he told Samuel, get up, anoint him. He's the one, he's the one I've chosen. Not because of what he looks like, but because of the heart that I have given him, a clean heart. The same clean heart that he has given to each and every single one of us through his baptism, through his works, through his righteousness. David went on from that day, as it's even told to us, that the Holy Spirit was upon him. And so he worked every day to have his appearance, his outward appearance, match the clean heart that God had given him. And certainly in David's life there were times where he would fall. When he dirtied his heart once again. And so it is later on that he would say, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew me once again. Make me clean all over again because that is what you do for me. And that's the gift that God has given us in baptism. And so knowing that we have been washed, knowing that we have been cleansed, knowing that we have a clean heart before God, we work now like David to let our outward appearance match what God has done for us, done for us inwardly. Because we know that God looks at us and he sees one clean in heart. And so we live that way. That we go and perform our duties faithfully, responsibly, like David did as shepherding those sheep. That it changes the way that we look at people, that as we look around at people, we can all see the value God has given. And even though we can't look at everyone's heart, for anyone who's been baptized, we can look at them and say, I know what God has done for you. I know God has given you a clean heart. That he's made you new and clothed you with his righteousness and with his perfection. God be praised. And for those that maybe we don't know, for every other person that we meet, we can still look at them and see, God has done amazing things for you. God has lived out perfection for you. God has gifted that to you and he has that gift waiting for you. He gives that to you through his word. He gives that through you to this wonderful gift of baptism. God makes you new. Certainly as each day comes and goes, we know the sin that we add into our lives. We know our impurities we know how dirty we can make our heart. But God has made us a new heart. God has cleansed us. And so we stand before God as one approved, one of whom he says, just as he said of his son, this is the one I love. With him, with her, I am well pleased because Christ has lived for you. Christ is your perfection. Christ is your worthiness. He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He has made our heart clean. So now, God, send your Holy Spirit to us as well so that we may make our appearance in this world match the clean heart that you have given us through the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue by singing those words as they've been put to music that David wrote so long ago from Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart. You find that at the top of page 12 in the worship book.
seated. Before we gather our gifts and offerings to the Lord, just a special announcement to our guests and visitors who are with us today. First of all, it's a pleasure to have you here. So glad you joined us uh, to worship our Lord together, to hear about that clean heart that He has made for us. If you'd like to learn more about what we teach, preach, and believe here at Light of the Valley, we have contact cards in every second and fourth chair in that rack by the hymnal. You can put your name on there, whatever contact information you'd like me to use to get a hold of you this following week. And you can put that in the offering plate as that comes around, or you can hand it to me at the end of the service today. So with that in mind, let's continue worshiping our Lord by gathering our offerings to Him. Jesus, your beloved Son, in whom you are well pleased. Assure those baptized this past year here at our congregation, Adam Horn, Daly Kakam, Reese and Jack Munson, Joshua Davis, Jaden and Declan Curtis, Olivia Holmberg, Cash Larson, and Mila Moreno Nemo, and all of us who have been baptized, that we in baptism have put on Christ, that you also call us your beloved and that you are well pleased with us. Renew us as your baptized children with a clean heart, so that we walk in newness of life, that our appearance would match the new heart that you have given us. Gracious Father, you opened the heavens, and the Holy Spirit descended on your only, only begotten Son. As we hear your good news, send that same Holy Spirit to us. Enable us to remain steadfast in the faith. Gracious Father, your Son humbled himself to be baptized at the Jordan River. Give humility also to all pastors today, to those in our national church body and our leaders, so that they serve you faithfully. Open the lips of every preacher to boldly proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins as John did. Open the ears of each of us to hear and believe your holy words. Look in mercy on all those who govern our country and the nations around the world. Give them courage to defend what is right and correct what is wrong. Grant them hearts that care for those who are vulnerable, including the unborn. Defend those who serve in the armed forces and all who labor to keep us safe. Allow commerce and the arts to flourish in ways that benefit all people. Gracious Father, at his baptism, your son voluntarily took on himself all our frailties and the results of our sinfulness. Give your comfort to all who mourn. Extend your healing hand to all who need your care. Assure them of your promise that even when your people walk through the fire, the flames will not consume them. Grant them faith to believe but they, that they need not fear, for you are with them. Lord, also in our prayers today, we remember our brother in Christ, Harry Short, who broke two ribs over this past week. We ask that you would bring healing to his body, that you would continue to provide for him and be with him as you have promised to be knowing that he too, like us who are baptized, have been washed clean and have been clothed with Christ. And now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions.
Receive our thanks, O Lord, for the lives of all your servants who were washed in baptism, taught your word, fed with Christ's precious body and blood, and now rest in your presence. Strength the baptismal faith of all here today. To your hands we commend ourselves and all those for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with the Lord and with one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. baptized in water in 297.
Now, sorry. That's my fault. I typo. So Friday, and it is, it is the 18th, right? Yes. All right, so I got the date right, I got the date wrong. John? Uh, I just wanted to let everybody know, I just dropped the tax, the tax information for last year in your mailbox, so please take that out. Okay, so John's our financial secretary. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, go, you can go seek him out uh, for that. All right, now I really can say, just say hello to each other, greet each other. I mean, especially somebody you haven't said hello to yet, you can head over to the fellowship hall, grab some goodies, lots of goodies there, and spend a little bit more time here um, getting to know the people you worship with. I'll get to the back, shake your hands, and wish you God's blessings on your week.